For most Blender artists, branching into game development is often much easier than pursuing a career in animation or the movie industry. Game development allows you to maintain creative control and start projects independently, without needing approval or waiting for someone to hire you. Unlike the animation industry, where work often depends on larger teams and studios, game development empowers artists to dive right into their own visions, bringing their creative ideas to life on their own terms. So today, let's take a look at what it takes to make a game inside Blender. Back in the day, Blender had its own game engine, making the process incredibly straightforward. It had everything you needed in one place. However, after version 2.5, Blender's game engine was discontinued. Today, creating a game-like interactive experience in Blender requires a bit of a journey. Piecing together tools that, when combined, can breathe new life into what was once one of the most capable game engines inside your favorite 3D application. The key difference between a typical 3D application like Blender or Cinema 4D and game engines like Unity or Unreal Engine is the game loop. A game loop is the core structure of a video game that keeps it running. It processes input, updates the game state, and consistently renders frames until the game ends. Essentially, it's the engine that makes the game feel alive and interactive. Add-ons like Omnistep have brought back game engine-like functionality to Blender. Unlike game engines that use game loops, non-game engine 3D applications like Blender, Maya, and 3ds Max rely on timeline playback for animation. When you pause the timeline, everything stops. Animations, particle effects, and physics simulations. You can easily skip ahead or rewind by interacting with the timeline. This approach is quite different from game engines, which don't have a traditional timeline that starts from zero and ends at a specific frame. Instead, game engines operate with continuous time, which only stops when the game itself ends or is paused. This continuous flow allows game engines to run multiple independent loops simultaneously without being limited by a timeline. For example, you could have a cloth simulation of a flag running in the background that won't reset when you start a new particle or physics simulation. Each system runs independently, unaffected by others. In contrast, in Blender and most 3D applications, everything is tied to the current frame and the timeline. When you change frames, all simulations update accordingly, making them dependent on the timeline state. Omnistep introduces a game loop to Blender, making playback independent of the timeline. This means that when you run out of frames, the simulation continues instead of looping back to frame one. Another key component is game logic. Back in the Blender game engine days, Blender featured logic bricks, node-like elements that could be connected to control the behavior of game actors. For more advanced interactions, you could also use Python scripting. Since Blender 2.8, logic bricks were removed, but many artists have shown that the same principles can be applied in geometry nodes to achieve similar, if not better, results. Arendelle even has a course and a free add-on for creating a fully controllable car game using only geometry nodes. These are the core components that can turn regular Blender into a game engine, a game loop, game logic, and game inputs. If setting this all up feels overwhelming, there's UPBG, an open source 3D game engine forked from the old Blender game engine, integrated directly into Blender. UPBGE's biggest strength is its unified workflow, allowing you to create a game from start to finish without ever leaving Blender. It essentially shows what Blender as a game engine could be. Honestly, I'm glad the Blender organization decided to abandon the game engine aspect of Blender to focus on its core features, allowing space for others to step in. UPBG has a dedicated team of developers working to bring in new features and leverage Blender's latest updates, something that would have been much slower under the Blender organization, given how many branches and projects they're already managing. For most indie game devs, the workflow does not change that much, whether they are using Blender, Unity, Godot, or Unreal Engine. The same tools and add-ons can be used, though you have to make sure that the assets are optimized for use in games. Right now, there are hundreds of powerful add-ons available for Blender. Unfortunately, most of them aren't specifically designed for game development. If you want to use them in a game engine, you may need to bake the shaders or apply modifiers to make the assets lightweight and optimized for real-time rendering. This ensures that game engines can handle them efficiently without sacrificing performance. Add-ons like destruction tools can be used in Blender and other game engines. The damage added, whether it's cracks, wall damage, or generated rebar, can be optimized to be low poly by reducing the subdivisions, making it usable in game engines. However, you may need to create your own materials depending on the game engine. 
Whenever you add damage, cracks, or rebar, you end up in UV seam selection mode, allowing you to easily mark selected seams and unwrap the object efficiently. The destroyed building generator is not specifically optimized for game engines, but it can still be used with some adjustments. By reducing the amount of damage and debris or adjusting the size and height of the building, you can make it more game engine friendly. Since the damage, exterior, and interior walls all have separate materials, you can easily replace them with materials you've created in Unity or Unreal. However, because these buildings are generated with geometry nodes, you'll need to apply the geometry node setup before exporting. This means that if you're using the buildings in other engines, they won't be procedural anymore. There are also add-ons like cell fluids that can be used in other game engines, albeit with limited functionality. For example, in Unity or Unreal Engine, you can export baked flow maps and set up shaders to displace meshes and achieve similar shading to Blender. Even when using these add-ons in Blender for game development, it's wise to keep them in their basic form to ensure they run smoothly in real time. If you're interested in content generation, the add-ons Platform Generator and Procedural Alleys are excellent choices. The Platform Generator, perfect for creating scaffoldings, medieval castles, and factory-like stairs, allows you to quickly generate structures that could serve as level props in a game engine. Another powerful tool is the Terrain Mixer add-on, which is ideal for crafting vast terrains and landscapes. While it might be a heavy lift for real-time applications, simplifying and optimizing the mesh can make it suitable for game engines like Unreal Engine or Unity. Large terrains can set the stage for open-world experiences, and Terrain Mixer allows you to craft everything from lush valleys to arid deserts, giving your game the diversity it needs. In terms of visual effects, add-ons like Geo Droplets are perfect for creating animated rain droplets that react naturally to surfaces. This can add a layer of atmospheric immersion to your scenes, even when you're working in Blender as your primary game creation tool. While not all of its features can be ported to real-time engines, baked textures or normal maps can replicate the effect without taxing the engine. If your game is set in a city, the procedural building generator is perfect for game developers looking to create expansive, detailed environments quickly. It allows you to create modular buildings that can be adjusted to fit the style of your game. Whether it's a modern skyscraper or a rustic cabin, you have full control over the building parameters, making it easy to create a diverse cityscape. The beauty of these add-ons and Blender's modularity is that it empowers indie game developers to create content that's often beyond what traditional game engines provide natively. Whether you're building assets for Unity, Unreal Engine, Godot, or using UPBGE to stay entirely within Blender, the workflow remains surprisingly flexible. Add-ons like Align Toolkit further broaden your capabilities from placing objects with precision, creating natural environments, to crafting the perfect lighting for scene presentation. The idea isn't to try to replace Unreal or Unity, but rather to embrace Blender as an integral part of the game development pipeline, a tool that provides versatility, creativity, and content creation power. It's about making Blender your first stop on the journey of game development, where you can shape the raw materials of your imagination before setting them free in a real-time environment. For game developers, integrating Blender into your game pipeline can mean faster prototyping, more creative control over assets, and a smooth workflow for producing game-ready content. With the help of these add-ons, you can take advantage of Blender's flexibility to enhance the creative aspects of your game while relying on established game engines like Unity, Unreal, or Godot for delivering interactive experiences. Blender isn't just a 3D modeling tool. It's a powerful ally for game development that can help you bring your vision to life from concept to final product.